Hey guys, Impact here. So we've got a huge patch to talk about, and there are a lot of changes related to the support role. Most people already knew Riot was trying to improve the support role next season, but what did they do exactly? Well, first things first. We now have new gold income items, three of them specific for the support role to be exact. The Spell Thief's Edge, Ancient Coin, and Relic Shield. Each one will cost you 365 gold, so you'll be able to get them at level 1. They'll be helping you out with your gold income earlier than before. You should also be aware that you are now receiving restricted to a single gold income item, so you won't be able to pick all three of them. Also, each item will be upgradable, but only to a single item, so you won't have as many options as you did in Season 3. This restriction was put in place because even if you upgrade the items, they'll still give you the extra gold, unlike Season 3 Shirelli's Reverie, for, for example. So now, when you choose what item fits you better, you will only be locked out from two other support items. Ancient Coin will be upgradable to Nomad's Medallion, which will be upgradable to Talisman of Ascension. This path is somewhat similar to the Philosopher's Stone path. It'll give you health regen, mana regen, and Talisman of Ascension will then give you the plus 40% movement speed AoE buff, just like Shirelli's Reverie. Ancient Coin will give you 2 gold every time a minion that you didn't last hit dies in the lane. Nomad's Medallion will increase that amount to 4 gold per minion, while also giving you plus 2 gold per 10 seconds. Like I said earlier, even if you upgrade the Medallion to Talisman of Ascension, your gold income passives will stick with you, so don't worry about upgrading your items. items too soon. Spell Thief's Edge is somewhat like Cage's Lucky Pack. You'll be able to upgrade it to Frost Fang and then Frost Queen's Claim, which is replacing the old Shard of True Ice. However, Claim's active is now only usable on enemy champions instead of allied ones, and it'll slow your target and all nearby enemies for 50% for 2 seconds, with a 1 minute cooldown. The previous items will all give you ability power and mana region per 5 seconds. Unlike the Ancient Coin, however, Spell Thief's Edge will give you Gold Pretend passive at level 1 a 2 gold per 10 seconds passive to be precise. It also grants you 4 gold every time you use a basic attack on a champion, and you'll be able to do it at once every 10 seconds. Killing a minion will disable this passive though. By upgrading the item to Frostfang, your GP10 will be increased to 4 gold per 10 seconds, and your tribute passive will now give you 8 gold for basic attacks on enemies. By getting Frost Queen's Claim, your spells will also start giving you extra gold as well, so you can get 16 gold instead of 8 every 10 seconds. The last of the new support items is Relic Shield. It sort of reminds me of the good old Art of Gold. You'll be able to upgrade it to Targon's Brace and then Face of the Mountain. The first two items will give you HP, regen and health, and Face of the Mountain will add a 10% cooldown reduction stat to the mix. It also grants you an active that will consume 20% of your current HP to shield a target ally for 10% of your max health for 4 seconds. After that time expires, the target explodes and deals 10% of your max HP as AoE magic damage. So if you're building tankiness and HP, this item will be especially good to get. Now, the way it grants gold is a little more complicated than the previous two items. Your basic attacks will execute minions below 200 health. By killing a minion, you'll heal the nearest ally champion for 2% of your max HP, and it'll grant them the gold you gained from the last hit, plus 5 gold. So both of you will get the gold from the last hit, but your AD carry will get a little something extra for his or her troubles. This effect requires a nearby ally champion, and it'll recharge every 30 seconds with a maximum of 2 charges. By upgrading to Targon's Brace, the maximum amount of charges you'll have at your disposal will be 4 instead of 2, and your AD carry will get an extra 10 gold instead of 5. The Mastery Tree has also been changed, and it'll also help you out with your gold income. Other than that, you are now able to further optimize your playstyle instead of having a couple of mastery pages that you'd switch between. There's a lot more room for players to actually play the way they want as a support now, and I definitely recommend you guys try out new masteries. With that being said, let me just name a few that will help you out with your gold income. Greed will give you 1.5 gold every 10 seconds. Scavenger will give you plus 1 gold each time an ally kills a nearby minion. Wealth will increase your starting gold by 40, and Bandit will grant you plus 15 gold on champion kill or assist if you're melee, or plus 3 gold each time an enemy champion is attacked if you're ranged. This won't trigger on the same champion more than once every 5 seconds though. So let's see, the new gold income items will give you a lot more gold, just like the mastery tree, is that it? Well, no. In these past seasons, supports were responsible for clearing enemy vision and getting wards. However, that's going to change now. First of all, Psy wards have been renamed. They are now called Stealth wards, and they cost pretty much the same. Vision wards, however, now cost 100 gold. 
every player is now limited to having a maximum of 3 stealth wards at the same time placed on the map. You can carry more, but if you place them, the first ones you placed will start to disappear. Also, notice that the trinket wards, sidestone wards and so on are called stealth wards, so the limit includes them as well. To add up to that, vision wards have also been changed. Every player can only place one at a time and they won't have a time limit anymore, so they'll stay there until you place a vision ward elsewhere or until someone clears them. The vision wards are now visible though, so you don't need to have true sight in order to reveal them. While they may be more vulnerable now because of it, their HP is now higher as well. Instead of 3 hit points, they now have 5, so they'll take longer to remove from the map. With that being said, everyone will have to be part of the warding game now, not just the supports, which will also allow you to use your gold elsewhere. A lot of people may also think, well, I'm gonna get, have to get oracles anyway. Well, no. Oracle's elixir got removed from the game, so you're not going to have to worry about that either. The assist bonus gold you get has also changed. If players have two more assists than kills, they earn 30 additional gold per assist. Additional assists increase this bonus by 15 gold, capping at 60 gold. However, the gold cannot be more than the original value of the kill. Also, assists are worth 50% of the kill value before 20 minutes, but they'll linearly increase up to 80% at 35 minutes. This pretty much rewards the players who get a lot of assists, so support players will be getting even more gold. To sum things up, you now have new gold income items, new masteries, you won't have to spend as much gold on warding an oracle's elixir like you used to, and you're even getting more gold on your assists. This leaves a lot more room for every support player to actually get the items they want instead of finishing every game with only a ruby sidestone and boots. And speaking about gold income and sidestone, what items should support players get now? Well, it's up to the player really. However, I'd say sidestone is now pretty much mandatory. It gives you all the wards that you'll be able to place as well as HP. Other than that, a new trinket system has been implemented that will help you play a role in the vision game even if you're not playing support. These trinkets will be placed in the 7th item slot that can only contain trinkets. If you choose to sell your trinket and buy a new one, the new trinket will be on 180 second cooldown from the get-go in order to reduce abusive use. So what trinkets can we get? There are 3 main trinkets at your disposal. The warding totem will place a stealth worth for 60 seconds with a 120 second cooldown. The scrying orb will reveal a location within 1100 range for 1 second with a 150 second cooldown, which is somewhat like clairvoyance. And the sweeping lens will disable and reveal nearby hidden wards, traps or devices for 4 seconds with a 180 second cooldown and 400 range. You'll be able to get any of these 3 trinkets from the store at level 1 for 0 gold. At level 9, they'll upgrade automatically and you won't even have to return to the shop. After that, you can also choose to upgrade the trinket further for 475 gold. You'll then be able to get one of the following four trinkets. Creator Stealth Totem, which will place a standard stealth ward with a 120 second cooldown. The Greater Vision Totem, which upgrades the stealth ward to a vision ward with a 180 second cooldown. The Farsight Orb will let you scout a target area within 2500 range instead of 1100 and with a 120 second cooldown, and the Oracle's Lens, which grants True Sight within 600 range and additionally grants True Sight to the player for 10 seconds after activation, somewhat like an Oracle's Elixir. Besides trinkets, a few items that supports could go for have also changed. Twin Shadows cost 2000 gold and its AP has been increased to 50. Will of the Ancients no longer gives a spell vamp aura but now costs 2000 gold and grants the player plus 50 AP plus 10 mana regen per 5, 10% cooldown reduction and plus 20% individual spell vamp. Michael's Crucible now costs 1600 gold, gives plus 40 magic resist, plus 12 mana regen per 5, and has an active that removes all CC from a target while also healing them. There are a few other changes that aren't so specific for the support role, but I highly recommend you guys check the patch notes for a more detailed list on what has changed. Last but not least, a lot of support champions were tweaked. Riot changed the way abilities scale on supports, emphasizing the utility of the champions rather than their damage output. Janna's global passive is gone. It only affects nearby allies now, but the movement speed buff has been increased. Howling Gale's AP ratio was reduced, 
just like the charge damage. Zephyr's passive self-movement speed buff now scales off AP, instead of increasing for flat amounts just like its slow debuff. The skill's AP ratio has also gone down. However, her shield, Eye of the Storm, has also been changed. The attack damage buff now scales at plus 1 attack damage per 10 ability power. So if you're planning on building AP on her, even if your skills don't deal as much damage, your AD carry will certainly thank you for it. Leona's Eclipse was also targeted. It now gains armor equal to 20% of Leona's bonus armor and MR equal to 20% of Leona's bonus magic resistance. And it's a pretty neat change, since now you'll have a lot more gold at your disposal, this little change will make her even more tanky than before. And we've reached Lulu's turn. Her passive now has an AP ratio, while its damage has been reduced. Her Glitter Lance slow also decays according to your ability power, her Whimsy's movement speed bonus also scales out of AP, and the help pick's offensive usage was also slightly nerfed. While I think she'll return her aggressive potential in lane, it's a change that should be welcomed. Since she's one of my mains, I can definitely say that her team fighting potential was somewhat weaker than a lot of other supports. I see these changes as steps in the right direction. Nami's Aqua Prison and Tidal Wave AP ratios have been reduced, but Ebb and Flow and Surging Tides are now scaling a lot better. Even though her potential damage isn't as big as it used to be, her kit seems to be a lot better now overall. Sona has also been a pain to balance over time. She's either too weak or way too strong. Riot is trying to change her up again in this patch. All of her power cords now have an AP ratio. However, her Hemna of Valor's ratio was reduced, which is to be expected since she can now build AP. Area of Perseverance's base heal amount was reduced at later ranks, Song of Celerity's speed boost now scales off AP, and Crescendo's AP ratio was also reduced. One of the champions that has been changed the most this patch has got to be Soraka. Even her base stats are better this time around. First of all, she has a new passive. Soraka's health and mana restoring abilities are 1% more effective for each 2% health or mana the target is missing. Starcall's magic resistance shred now scales off ability power, and if it hits at least one champion, Astral's blessing cooldown is reduced. And speaking of Astral's blessing, the bonus armor it grants now also scales off AP, but it lasts for a shorter period of time. Since you'll now build some ability power, the base healing has also been reduced. Infuse now donates 5% of Serac's maximum mana, as well as a changed flat amount. And when cast on an enemy, it now deals damage according to her max mana as well. Her ultimate now affects untargetable allies, and its healing effect has been reduced. And finally, we have Tarek, who also has a new shiny passive. After casting a spell, Tarek now gains a buff that deals 30% of his total armor as magic damage on his next auto attack. By doing so, all abilities cooldowns will be reduced by 2 seconds. Imbue's base cooldown was lowered, just like its AP ratio. Shatter base damage was reduced and armor reduction now scales with 10% of Tarek's total armor. Dazzle's AP ratio was lowered and its cooldown was increased. And finally, Radiance's AP ratio was lowered, unlike its cooldown, which was increased by 15 seconds. That was a long patch, wasn't it? If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to Machinima vs. YouTube channel and to leave a thumbs up down below. Also, don't forget to check out the patch changes for the other roles as well. If you're interested, I'll be covering all of these changes in detail in my own YouTube channel, so feel free to check it out and subscribe. And that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the new patch. So good luck, have fun, and until next patch.